The Tyvee is the longest river that starts and ends in Wales. It's 75 to 80 miles long. Uh, this is supposed to be the queen of Welsh rivers, and at the moment she's, she's very much being dethroned. We used to have fishermen fishing and, and catch something in the river. There was salmon coming up the river and trout. There's nothing there anymore. It's gone back to being an empty river, a lifeless river. Behind me is the River Tyvee. It's one of the longest rivers in Wales and, as you'll probably agree, one of the most beautiful. But despite this amazing backdrop, this river and many others like it facing a barrage of problems. Everything from sewage pollution to microplastics to slurry from farming. That's all really choking the health of our rivers across the country. So join us as we make our journey upriver to find out some of the issues that waterways like this are facing in this country and what we can do to protect them. Right now we're almost at the mouth of the river. So Cardigan is another two miles down the road and that's where the estuary opens up into, into the main ocean. And this of course is where everything gets flushed down uh, and we are beginning to see the impacts of, of things happening further upstream. So when we're standing in a really beautiful spot like this and the natural world looks pretty good to me, to my naked eye, actually there's probably a lot of stuff happening below the surface that we can't see but it's really important that we measure the impact. Uh, very, very much so. Mainly due to pollution coming from the water uh, and that predominantly is agricultural pollution. So we get a lot of slurry spills into the river and over the years the incidence of those have increased and alongside that we get sewage outflows as well. So I think in 2021 there was a ridiculous, I think 470 spills within the river just up from where we are now. What is the problem with slurry leaching into the waterways? The main issue we're finding is the increase in nitrates and phosphates. So those uh, in turn encourage uh, invasive species to sort of thrive on the site. So some of those invasive species are, are, are native, such as hemlock water dropwort and nettles and your brambles. And those species, especially in narrow uh, water channels and courses, tend to choke up the streams. And that in turn affects the passage of fish uh, and also open water element of, of the site. Sewage is one of the main impacts of that, uh, but I would say predominantly it's agricultural runoff. So slurry, when they put slurry on the fields, tends to come when the rain comes and it rushes straight into the water and that in turn comes through the reserve. We spoke to Alad Lewis, a local dairy farmer, to find out more about the environmental challenges posed by livestock. The biggest problem is farmers have had to increase their numbers and haven't increased the slurry storage part of their business and this now is starting to become a problem whereas before um, every farm had enough land for the cows they had and if you look all over the country now there's so much big farms with five hundred thousand cows and their biggest problem is controlling the slurry and storing it. When you push your land to the maximum and carrying too much stock, that's when the land and the pollutant will start happening around your rivers. Most farmers are trying their best and some of the spills that we've had have been purely accidental but there are times in terms of when they spread slurry and how much they spread slurry on their fields that needs to be accounted for. But the intensification process has, has become so, so, so intense that um, the farmers now are, in some ways are up against it, you know, in terms of what they can do, what they can't do. But I think um, there needs to be a whole shift in the way that we, ma we manage our land. Uh, and farming is, of course, one of the biggest factors affecting land change in the UK. Regulatory bodies have got to stand on their own two feet and say, right, hands up, we haven't been enforcing things, we need to do a better job at doing that. There needs to be examples made in order for other farmers to realise that what they're doing is having an impact on the land, not just their land, but the wider countryside in general. What we try to do is not to pollute the river. And the, the methods we use, we um, uh, don't spread any slurry or farmyard manure close to the river. We have two miles of river frontage and we have a buffer zone of at least 30 metres from any part of the river that we don't uh, put any kind of uh, fertiliser. It helps the farmer and the farmer tries to help the river by looking after it. We used to have fishermen fishing and, and catch something in the river. There was salmon coming up the river and trout. There's nothing there anymore. Kim Waters from the Welsh Rivers Union is dedicated to restoring the fish and wildlife of the Tyvee. This river was one of the great salmon rivers of Wales. It's possible that this will be extinct. Salmon will be extinct in this system within 12 years. So I'm right in thinking that the Tyvee has got special conservation status, right? Well, special areas of conservation have characteristics, salmon, suing, 
uh, lamprey, ranunculus weed, there's a whole variety of species that we're losing in this river that is now beginning to classify it as a failing special area of conservation. This river is polluted from farming, from sewage. Are there any other factors that we need to consider? Well, what you must always remember within those two vectors of moving um, pollutants into the river is they're carrying much more than just those nutrients. There are PFAS chemicals, you know, there are insecticides, herbicides, uh, fungicides. Um, the whole ecosystem is under threat from many areas. And then, of course, there's plastics and microplastics. Plastic in terms of, of litter pollution, we get washed down as well. So sometimes you get bigger stuff like tires and fridges come down, which is ridiculous. Um, but the microplastics are the ones that, the ones that you can't see are the more of a concern because they of course get into your, the food chain. So your smaller fish will eat them, then you get the, 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 an otter will eat the fish and so on and so forth. So it goes up the, the food chain and eventually deposits itself in your, your apex predator. So that silage wrap, the vein of my life. Local fisherman Stefan Jones runs regular plastic waste cleanups on the Tyvee. Today, as a, as a club effort, if you like, we are trying to cover and collect as much as possible. Uh, that would be black silage wrap. This will be the thicker stuff in there, more like a tap hole in. I can't define where that's from. Wouldn't be surprised if it is agricultural, but that's definitely agricultural. And that's just in one bramble. We're probably 20 miles off the sea at the moment. So if you imagine all of these shards breaking down smaller sections, smaller sections, smaller sections, by the time it gets down into Cardigan Bay, you are then into your microplastic stage. So this is the culmination of what we've found on this one field. Real mixture of stuff, three tires, load of black silage wrap again, part of an old bucket fertilizer bag, energy can, a little crate, a few bottles. That's like a mesh that goes around around bales as well. So as you can see, yeah, that's just one field's worth on the on the River Tyvee. I spend a lot of time on the riverbank. I get to see this. If you don't do that, it's very difficult to, to see what is going on on the river, but I'm hoping this kind of helps you visualize what is going on. It's a minority of farmers that essentially see the river as a means of waste disposal. It, it really is that simple. You know, why pay to get something disposed of when they can just dump it in the river and then the river takes care of it? If they get caught, they may get fined. That's highly unlikely if I'm honest, but the majority of times they don't get caught because actually it's very difficult to source as well where that, uh, where that pollution has actually entered the river course. We will make about 4,000 tonnes of silage in, in a clamp and in big bales, as we can see here. But the problem is, when winter comes, there is so much plastic to be had. And the plastic of these round bales is a nightmare to control because you will pull it off the bale and if the wind catches a part of it, it's gone. And it's wrapped around a tree, wrapped around a fence and sometimes ends up in rivers. So we here try to contain all the plastic, which is very difficult on a, on a windy day like today to keep that plastic under control. Nobody knows who's polluting. You know, it's so easy to blame the farmer that he's polluting the river. There was a discharge from the waterworks a couple of years ago and that was just brushed under the table. And we've, we've all seen the discharge that comes from these waterworks across the country. Who is policing them? Who is doing that? And when that happens, is there any kind of fine? The farmers or the, the local people don't hear about it. There's a water treatment plant just behind the trees over there, and that's uh, the outflow is just behind the trees. And then just below us here, there's another outlet, uh, which is from, the, uh, from a village uh, just above us as well. So literally just here, you have two, two outflows. But again, unless you knew this section in particular, if you were just driving by, you would have no idea that that was, was taking place about 150 metres away from the road. The river, for me, is more than just a name and water. A river like this becomes part of you. So it's not just about what I can take from the river. For most of the time, for me, it's what I can give back to the river. So these are all parts of the jigsaw. It's not one issue and it's not one solution. So you're talking about your plastics, you're talking about agricultural pollution, you're talking about the sewerage outflows. It's a massive jigsaw of issues. And unless we kind of get together and start tackling them, uh, yeah, you've got to be skeptical about what the future holds.
So as conservationists, we've been talking about these problems for years, if not decades. Um, and sadly, things have not much has changed. Uh, we keep saying it, but we really do need to make action. So this is the million dollar question. What should we be doing? How do we fix this problem? Well, I think, for, first of all, lobby the government. I mean, there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of changing the practices, in terms of the, the, the water companies, the way they treat the sewage, the way they uh, uh, handle the outflows. But within the farming sector, big time, there needs to be a lot more enforcement done in terms of monitoring and, 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 and uh, um, enforcing any issues that might occur on, on those lands that has a direct impact on nature reserves. I would love to revert back to the old practices where you've got smaller farms, smaller fields, managed less intensively, more sustainably. But I, you know, I, I fully appreciate the pressures that farming, the farming industry and the sector is under. But I think as, as a society, until we learn to pay a bit more for our food and give farmers a better return for what they're producing, that's the only way things are going to change. Even though that food in the supermarket is high, that the farmer is not getting that return of what he's producing. Welsh Government and the UK Government needs to look at uh, supporting these farmers. In the past, there has been uh, money coming from government to help uh, understand your business and to improve your business by, you don't have to have 200 cows, but make your 150 cows work better. There needs to be an incentive for farmers to do this. You don't have to be a, a river user to, to actually get involved with a lot of this stuff. You just have to care. You have to care about what's going on on your, on your doorstep. You can kind of go, somebody will do it for me, or do you pitch in and become part of the solution? As environment reporter, I obviously spend quite a lot of time writing about our natural worlds and the pressures it faces. But often that is based in London from a desk. So coming here to Wales and seeing the real life impacts that rivers like the Tybee face has been really eye-opening. And you can really see writ large the pressures that waterways like this are facing from sewage pollution, from agriculture, from plastics. And you really get a sense of how urgent it is that we start to take action now to fix this problem.